So today we're going to do a very interesting test. We're going to do a fair and objective speed test on Gutenberg versus old school page builders. By old school, I mean Elementor, Seedprod, DV, Beaver Builder, Thrive Architect, Timify, and Site Origin. These page builders have been around for a very long time. And I'm not forgetting new school page builders like Oxygen, Bricks, Breezy, and Live Canvas. The only reason for me to separate old school and new school is because I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of all page builders like this and i just can't feed more than eight page builders on the same screen so if you're interested in seeing the comparison for the new school page builders then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification anyway if you're new to my channel i share lots of wordpress and online business tutorials and my primary focus is on gutenberg and if you have been following my channel you know that i'm always very critical about page builders because of speed concerns i have much experience with page builders in the past and i've spent thousands of dollars hiring a web developer to optimize my site but the result is still dismal and today i'm trying to prove that point so it's probably much easier for me to prove that point by segregating the new school from old school because i think the new school page builders are built on faster platforms and i think that they will perform better but We'll see about that. So without further ado, let me share with you how I will conduct this test and how I intend to make it fair and objective. The first test we'll do is the bloat test, which means the extra page size, JavaScript, and CSS that are added to a blank page. So what we'll do for this test is just to add a header and a button to a page using page builders, and we will compare it with the result of a blank page and see how much of a difference it makes. The second test, which is the most important test, we are going to create a simple landing page like this from scratch and I will create them right in front of you so you know there is nothing to hide. Although I'm critical with page builders, I want to make this experiment objective and not based on my opinion. Transparency is the goal of this video. Then for us to have accurate results, instead of running three rounds of tests on speed testing tools such as Google PageSpeed Insights, Pingdom, and GT Metrics at the same time period, we will do a total of 10 tests over 12 hours. I would do a test at these timings on those speed testing platforms and if you're curious why I'm not doing a test at 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. It's basically for daddy duties. So with this 10 test intervals, we'll do an average and then compare the results. I think this will allow us to get a very accurate result that is fair and objective. To make this test fair, what I'm going to do is to install each of these page builders on a separate domain, but all these domains are hosted on the same server. We will not install any caching plugin and any external elements used on a page, such as the images and fonts, will be exactly the same. Also, we'll give these page builders the best advantage, meaning these page builders will be installed on their own WordPress team. So for example, Elementor will be installed on the Halo team developed by Elementor, Beaver Builder will be installed on the Beaver Builder team, Site Origin will be installed on the Vantage team, DV Builder will be installed on the DV team, Thrive Architect will be installed on the Thrive team builder, Timify will be installed on the Timify Ultra team. The only exception will be the seed prod because it does not have a specific team made from the builder. So for this case, we'll install the fastest WordPress team that I've tested, which is GeneratePress. If you're interested to know why I say GeneratePress is the fastest WordPress team, then you can check out this video right here. I've left the link in the description as well. And finally, for Gutenberg, which is our main test subject, we'll be installing the GeneratePress team as well. And to help me build the landing page, we'll be installing Cadence Blocks. So this kind of gives Gutenberg a disadvantage in the sense of compatibility, just like Cprod. So these are the conditions to make the test fair and objective, let's start with showing you that all the domains are hosted on the same server. So as you can see, there are eight different domains installed with the default WordPress team. So to find out if they are hosted on the same server, let's use a third party tool called whoishostingthis.com. And let's do the test. And here we go, they all have the same IP address and the name servers are the same as well. They are all hosted on the same server, which is SiteGround. SiteGround is one of the fastest mid-range web hosts I recommend for speed. If you intend to change a web host, maybe you can consider this. I've left a link in the description for the latest discount if you're interested. Anyway, let's do a base test on all these domains before we install the page builders. That way we will have something to compare it to. But before that, let me show you what's on the back end. As you can see, there are no plugins installed on any of these domains.
And as you can see, I've deleted all the other teams and the only team that is installed on all domains is the 2021 team. So let us do the test and I will fast forward this. And these are the results and it will be our point of reference for each domain for the bloat test. Now let us install the teams and page builders. So we have installed all the teams, now let's install the page builder plugins. So I've installed all the page builder plugins, the DV builder and the Teamify builder are not necessary because they are built into the team. So now let's create a blank page and we will add a header and a button to it. So we've added the header and the default button from each of the page builders. Now let's do the bloat test. So these are the Google PageSpeed Insight scores. And with just one look, you know that which page builders are bloated. So now remember we started off on a page size of 40 plus KB on the 2021 team and as for Gutenberg where we installed the Generate Press team, the page size is actually smaller than the 2021 team. And from here you can see that DV is the most bloated page builder based on the page size and when it comes to the number of requests, Elementor has the most. And remember we have only added a header and a button and that's it. So as you can see from here, Gutenberg is the only one that is CSS heavy and the rest are JavaScript heavy. The highest page size is again DV followed by Thrive Teams and then ranking at the third place is Elementor and when it comes to the total request, Elementor is at the top position followed by Thrive Teams and then Site Origin. And other than Gutenberg, none of the page builders have a single digit total page request and when it comes to the total page size, Gutenberg is on a different level. So in terms of the bloat test, DV is ranking at the top position in terms of the most bloated page builder. So Gutenberg versus page builders on a bloat test Gutenberg wins. And this concludes the bloat test. Now let me create a simple landing page and make them look almost identical but I will not make you sit here for hours watching me build up those pages so I will fast forward the process and I hope that my hard work earns a simple thumbs up from you. I really spent a lot of time doing this so that you can see for yourself a true and accurate test between Gutenberg versus page builders and if you can help to share your opinion and experience with these page builders in the comment section, I'll really be grateful for that. Honestly, this entire process took about 5 hours to complete because I'm not familiar with quite a few page builders and some of them were not very intuitive. I've experienced with Elementor and Thrive Architects so they were easy to navigate around and although I don't have experience with others, I found that Beaver Builder was quite intuitive. Teamify and DV were a little challenging but manageable once I understood the platform. Cprod was actually quite easy to use but it is lacking in some features such as the background image overlay and the two column mobile layout. And at the end of this process, you will see that those features are lacking. I've searched on Google but I can't find any information. But the worst builder of all, which I'm going to drop out from this test, is Site Origin because it is just too hard to navigate around and the live preview isn't really helpful and there are just so many roadblocks in between. I spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out how to add the top section and I still couldn't figure it out. So it is not intuitive at all. And it just doesn't make sense to have this builder because it is 10 times easier to edit with Gutenberg blocks so I'm dropping site origin out and I hope you don't think less of this test. Now I know there are a lot of people saying that it is hard to switch to Gutenberg because it is not intuitive, there are not many features, you can't really see the live view of the page which I totally understand but 
Take me for example. I used to work with Thrive Teams and Elementor because they were easy to use. And at that point in time, the WordPress editor wasn't that robust yet. I was always looking for an alternative because I knew with page builders, I could never get a Google PageSpeed Insight score of more than 90, even if I have the best hosting, the best WordPress team and such. So when WordPress decides to put their focus on Gutenberg, I started to work on it for a couple of hours. And if you have worked on a WordPress editor before, it's kind of intuitive. And of course, there was a learning curve. but. After a while, it gets easy. It is all about getting used to it. Every page builder or platform has a learning curve. It might be a little uncomfortable at first, but once you get a hang of it, it gets easier and easier, much like anything you do in life. And in this page building process, it was a learning curve for me to get to know other page builders as well. It's all about getting used to it. And honestly, Gutenberg is not lacking in features. It is a misconception. I would say Gutenberg can offer up to 80 to 90% of what page builders can do. So it is so advanced now that I'm confident recommending it to people who own a WordPress website. So the reason why I emphasize so much on using Gutenberg is because of the benefits to it. Firstly, in the past, you could never create a professional looking website without investing some money on either the WordPress team or a page builder. But now with Gutenberg, having a professional looking website for free is within grabs. And the biggest benefit of all is you can finally have the opportunity to achieve a 90 plus Google PageSpeed rating, considering the fact that Google is going to take into account the web vitals of your site. Anyway, this was a tedious process, but I felt it was necessary and that's why I'm going through the process. And now I'm done. The next step is the final test and I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. to do it. So let's go. So let me give you a brief while I fast forward this process again. There are a total of 10 tests conducted over 12 hours and this will give us a very accurate gauge on the performance of each page builder. And if you notice, within each test, I had to do multiple tests on Google PageSpeed Insights because I want to eliminate the issue with reduced initial server response time. Because I think this has nothing to do with the performance of the page builder. If I was testing the server speed, I would have taken that into account. So to make this test fair, I had to do multiple testing and make sure there is no such issue on the results. So this will not give advantage to any particular page builder in case you're wondering. And I noticed that the results from GT Metrics is not very accurate. I mean, when you look at the final results, you will see that Thrive Architect is crowned the fastest loading page builder, even faster than Gutenberg, which is impossible. And this reminded me when I was using Thrive Teams products exclusively. When I questioned them about why my site was producing a poor result on Google PageSpeed Insights, they told me to ignore those results and focus on GT metrics. And this is probably the reason why. Anyway, that does not matter anymore because with the coming Google Core update, they will look at the web vitals on Google PageSpeed Insights. So no matter the results on GT metrics, I think what's important is the data from Google. So here we are at the final results and we'll start with the results from GT Metrics. And as I said, Thrive Architect is getting the best score for loading time and Beaver Builder as well. And they are faster than Gutenberg, which is kind of weird. And there is a reason behind this. If you look at the results from Gutenberg, the fully loaded time for Gutenberg is hovering around 900 plus milliseconds, 800 plus milliseconds. And there is this one second over here. And if you look at this, there is this 700 plus milliseconds and this result as well. And they are the fastest recorded timing for all the results shown here for all page builders. But the one result that caused Gutenberg to slow down a lot is the last test over here. It's getting 1.8 seconds. And this brought down the overall average. And that's why you're looking at this. So whether or not you take this as a reliable test result, I leave it up to you. The reason why I say it is weird is because with a small page size and a low request count, it's kind of weird that the fully loaded time is so high. I mean, if there are a lot of web requests, it makes sense for the server to take a longer time to fulfill those requests. But with a small request count and a small page size, it just doesn't make sense that it takes 1.8 seconds to load. I hope this makes sense to you and that's why I will not focus so much on the results from GT Metrics and I choose to put more focus on the web vitals from Google PHP Insights, which we'll look at in a while. Anyway, the total page size for Gutenberg is half the size of those popular page builders or even three times smaller than those popular page builders. And the total number of requests is the smallest as well. And when we look at Pingdom, 
Gutenberg has the highest overall grade and you might be wondering why is it not getting grade A and the reason is because it is not optimized otherwise you can achieve grade A easily with Gutenberg like my website. It is almost the size of the test subject and it loads much less requests because it is optimized for speed. I couldn't say the same for page builders though I think they will not get a grade A even if they are optimized because innately they load a lot more requests than Gutenberg. But anyway this unoptimized Gutenberg page has the smallest page size and it loads the smallest amount of requests. And finally, the most important test of all, Google PageSpeed Insights. And as you can see here, Gutenberg is the only one that achieved the result of more than 90. And when comparing the results of this versus the data from GT Metrics, the difference for Thrive Architect is heaven and earth. Thrive Architect got the worst result of all, followed by DV and Elementor. Of all the old school page builders, Beaver Builder seem to be one of the best performing. But overall, Gutenberg trumps all page builders in all aspects of the web vitals. So Gutenberg versus old school page builders, you know who wins. The next question is, will these new school page builders perform close or even better than Gutenberg? We will discover that in another video. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so with the bell notification so you won't miss any future videos from my channel. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you are using any of these page builders, please seriously consider switching it to Gutenberg because the next Google update in May will be focused on Core Web Vitals, which simply means page speed. If you want to know more about the Google update, I've left links in the description. Also, if you struggle with switching between page builders and Gutenberg, you can check out this video at the top right. I think this will be very helpful to you. And if you need a Gutenberg tutorial, you can check out the video at the bottom. Hope to get a thumbs up from you. If you did, thank you. All the best to you. Stay cool and stay safe.